welcome to our service of worship here at Trinity Pangrain Church on Sunday the 6th of December, the second Sunday in Advent. Whenever you're watching or wherever you're watching from, you're most welcome and may you be blessed. We're very much still in a time of waiting, um, of watching, a time of expectation, a time of preparation, a quiet time, a time of stillness. We have our magnificent Christmas tree up in the high street in the town centre and the streets are draped with sparkling, twinkling lights. We're preparing for Christmas as a congregation, as a community. But it'll be a different kind of Christmas this year. But in our church, it's quiet, expectant. Our worship is calm measured. Advent is, is special. We don't want to rush Advent. We have to experience Advent before we can celebrate Christmas. As Martin Fair said recently, we have to journey up the mountain to appreciate the glorious view from the top. So let us continue our Advent waiting, our Advent journey in our call to worship. We come to prepare the way, the way for Christ, the hope of Christ, the peace of Christ, to enter our world, to enter our hearts. We cry out together in the wilderness. The kingdom of heaven has come near. We come to be part of the light, the light that shines in the darkness. We light our second Advent candle, the candle of peace. Today we light the candle of peace along with the candle of hope. Lighting this second candle reminds us of the complexity of what it means to feel peace this year. With a year full of uncertainty, anxiety and fear, the peace candle invites us into a safe and secure place where we can just be. Let us pray. Lord, as we light the candle of peace, we acknowledge the times this year when peace has felt too far away. We acknowledge the times when our peace has felt insecure. We acknowledge our shared desire for your safe presence of peace as we continue our Advent journey. And Holy God, we thank you for the gift of peace that is found in Christ Jesus. Remind us of the safety and security of your peace as we enter into another week. Amen. We sing our first hymn, CH4274, Comfort, Comfort Now My People.
our prayer of approach and the Lord's prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you for this season of Advent, for its mood of expectation, its message of hope, its call to prepare ourselves. At this time when the night seems so long and the days short, where the darkness threatens to overwhelm, we long for the light of your peace. Merciful God, meet with us here and touch our lives again as we remember the coming of Jesus, a fulfilment of ancient promises and of promises yet to be realised. Meet us, Lord, in all the dark places of our lives and shine upon all the dark shadows that your light might bring healing and comfort and renewal. Loving God, we confess that our hearts are fickle, so often full of other things than you. Forgive us when we prefer the shallow comforts of this world rather than the deep peace of your kingdom. We confess that our faith is like the flowers and the grass. It fades away when challenge comes, challenges that disturb our way of thinking, our way of life. And yet you still assure us of your grace. You still speak tenderly to us today. Comfort, comfort my people. You still long to gather us like lambs and carry us close to your heart. Open us again this day to your love, that we may prepare a way for you, that all the rough places be made smooth, the crooked places straight, and that your glory may be revealed. Hear our prayers in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Kara reads our scripture. The beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptising in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt round his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come more, one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. And we read also from Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says the Lord. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, 
and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling. In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the Sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms, and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that hang young. So here we are in the second Sunday of Advent. Most people will have their Christmas trees up by now and perhaps some have even ventured out to get some Christmas shopping. In any other year we would have been to the panto. Oh yes we would. And we would now be looking forward to all our traditional Christmas services. And just as we are beginning to bask in the warm Christmas glow, the Gospel writer Mark kicks us back out into the cold. He drags us out of our cosy Christmas slumber back hundreds of years before the birth of the Messiah to the prophet Isaiah and his words, prepare the way of the Lord. And then the Christmas music is just about drowned out as John the Baptist appears in the wilderness, shouting and bawling at us to repent of our sins. It's less than three weeks to Christmas. Where are the angels and the stars and the stables? But Mark's Gospel tells us nothing of that warm, cosy tale of stars in the bright sky and a baby asleep on the hay. Instead, he tells us that the story of Jesus, the good news, doesn't begin at Christmas or even at Advent. It begins long ago, before the dreams of the prophets, long ago in the beginning in the mind of God. A God who is working his purpose out. A God who sees the end at the beginning. Mark talks instead of wilderness. He talks of preparing a way. He gets right in there with John the Baptist and the need for repentance and forgiveness of sins. And he says it is the beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah. Mark, the Gospel writer, knows that we have to start in the wilderness. We have to begin with acknowledging our sin and our brokenness and the brokenness of this world. We have to begin by recognising that there is pain. And as this truly awful year of 2020 limps to a close, we don't need much convincing of the sin and brokenness of the world. We don't need to look too far to see a hurting world and a wounded, frightened people. And so in the first chapter of his Gospel, Mark takes us back. 700 years or so 
before Jesus to the prophet Isaiah and to a time when the people of Israel, an exiled people, have turned away from God. Despite the prophet Isaiah's pleas to them, they have disobeyed God and broken his covenant again and again. But in the passage we read from Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah tells the people that a time of restoration, a time of restitution is coming. God is not bringing punishment. On the contrary, he's bringing rewards. He wants to comfort them. He is tending his flock like a shepherd and gathering up his lambs in his arms. These people who have failed them again and again are people who themselves often felt cut off from their God because of their waywardness, because of their sin. And yet Isaiah is called to proclaim the good news to these people. Here is your God. So get ready. Prepare a way for the Lord. Make smooth the rough places. Straighten out whatever is crooked. He comes to you longing to carry you close to his heart. The good news, the unbreakable love of God. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. And on this second Sunday in Advent, in the year 2020, even if our scripture has no star and angels, this is good news. Winter has come in like a lion. It's cold and it's dark. There's already been snow and ice and high winds and even thunder snow. But yes, there is hope. We have at last a vaccine which according to the Scottish Government will be rolled out as early as Tuesday. But getting back to any sense of how life used to be is still a long way off. We might be looking at late spring, early summer, before we can at last dispense with all this social and physical distancing, perhaps even longer. Meanwhile, people are still wandering in the wilderness of weariness and loneliness. Thousands of years separate us from the people who first heard Isaiah's prophecy. But our situations are not dissimilar. The people of Israel are living in the wilderness. This time living in exile in Babylon. And they've never stopped yearning from home, longing for their identity, their temple, their way of life. And they are people humiliated, crushed, demoralised. Far away from all that is safe and familiar to them. In the wilderness. And even though, though there is hope, Isaiah tells them, there will be a way home. God is even now preparing a way for you. They are at this moment still a displaced people. There is still despair and there is still fear. But Isaiah has good news for them. The hard times are over, people. But you've got to prepare the way. Make smooth the rough places. Straighten out all the uneven ground. In other words, sort yourselves out. Address all that stuff in your life that got you here in the first place. What has caused us to walk in the wilderness, I wonder? To be sure, biblical wilderness is not out in the middle of the glens or some other quiet place where we might go for a nice walk and uh, a time of quiet reflection. The wilderness that both Isaiah and Mark refer to is a hard place, a hostile place, a lonely place. A place that we've all been to, one way or another. A place where we have absolutely no power and no choice but to wait and to watch for God. And it's here 
in this wilderness that God, through the prophet Isaiah, speaks tenderly to his people. It's here he says, comfort, comfort my people. Christmas is coming. It will be different. It will be a Christmas like no other. The usual family gatherings might not be possible or they might not be prudent. There might be less money around this year for presents. This might be the Christmas where the empty space at the table hurts more than ever. And yet both our readings this morning from Isaiah and from Mark's Gospel insist on proclaiming the good news. News of comfort, news of joy. Isaiah tells us that God is coming. A God who will tend his flock like a shepherd, gather the lambs in his arms and carry them close to his heart. He will gently lead those that have young. And that would have come as a shock to the people of his day who thought God was all about punishment and judgment and retribution. But it's the same God that John the Baptist also proclaims with his message of repentance for forgiveness of sins. And John's message, like Isaiah's, is intended for people living under foreign oppression. In this case, not the Babylonians, but the Romans. And John the Baptist tells the people of one who is coming. The one whose sandals he is not worthy to untie. The one who will baptise not with water, but with the Holy Spirit. The God that we know fully in Jesus Christ. In the midst of our countries, our world's crippling fear, in the midst of our own heavy grief, comes this Advent proclamation of good news. Here is our God. Comfort awaits us in the wilderness of despair. God promises to come to us in the hard places of our lives. So prepare a place in the wilderness of your heart on this second Sunday of Advent. We have lit our candle of peace. And in this time of waiting and uncertainty, we bask in God's glorious promise. His promise of peace. His shalom. The promise of a life with God that is calm and reconciled. We are a forgiven people. A redeemed people. A beloved people. A comforted people. A people assured of no matter what else is going on around us, God promises us that the Prince of Peace will come and the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. We sing again a wonderful Christmas hymn, CH 4314. It's a very well-known Scottish tune. Child in the manger.
Our prayer of intercession. Let us pray. Most holy God, on this the second Sunday of Advent, we hear your servant calling out in the wilderness, proclaiming the coming of the Messiah. This world stands in need of you. Everywhere we look, we see such need of you, need of your restoration, need of your transformation, need of your peace. You call us to reach out to this broken world, to those walking in darkness, to those wrestling with despair, to those struggling to find purpose in life. And so we pray for all nations to know your truth and your light. We pray for the poor. We pray for the hungry. We pray for the needy. We pray for those within our congregation and community and those known to us who are ill at this time. And we remember those who bring light into dark places, those who are filled with such compassion and concern for others. Those who minister to the sick, those who comfort the bereaved, those who speak words of life to the lonely. And we especially thank you for those within this congregation and this community who look after each other in these strange days. God of abundant mercy, we pray for those who have been bereaved, those whose hearts are broken, those whose voices tremble with grief and sorrow. Comfort, comfort your people, Lord. Comfort those of us who sit in darkness and speak to us tenderly of the peace that awaits us, of the balm of healing for our weary and wounded souls. Lord, grant us a glimpse of your glory. Open our eyes to your coming to us, coming as a shepherd to care for his flock, coming to heal, restore, to forgive, and at the last to bring us home. Hear our prayer in the name of Jesus, Prince of Peace, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm still looking for pictures of your Christmas trees. Please send them to me by email. Um, and if you want to send a picture also along with a, a message uh, for the congregation, just Happy Christmas or whatever you want to say, uh, please do send that to me and I'll put it together um, for our Christmas reflection on Christmas Day. The in-person services are back in the church for at least the Advent and Christmas period. We'll see how it goes and uh, we can decide after that whether to remain in the church or whether to move back to the hall. And we're looking for more people to volunteer with the cleaning. So if that's something that you can help with, please do phone Pat Taylor on 8539199. Next Sunday on the 13th of December um, we have our service of quiet reflection at 4pm and this will be an online only service this year. This is a service that acknowledges that Christmas can be a difficult time for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one or for those who are lonely or find Christmas difficult for other reasons. Can we take time, time in that service to hold that sadness and have the opportunity to remember a loved one in a time of quiet reflection and music. And um, as you watch that service you may like to have a candle and the means to light it at hand and at an appropriate time during the service it will light the candle in memory of a loved one. 
One of the things we're going to miss this year is the opportunity to sing our Christmas carols. So on Sunday the 20th of December at 6pm, there is an invitation for us to join together from the safety of our own doorstep and join with Radio North Angus for a doorstep carol service and sing our favourite hymns accompanied by some um, local choirs from across Angus. And you can look out for more information on that uh, and the carols that we're going to be singing uh, on Facebook. And if you don't have Facebook, please do feel free to email me or phone me and I can get the hymns and any other information to you. Um, the kit session meets on this Thursday, the 10th of December at half past seven by Zoom. And can I ask the elders to please email me or phone me for the, the details, the, the Zoom meeting details, or indeed the phone number to access that meeting. Until we meet again, go in peace. Love and care for one another in the name of Christ. The Lord comes to you in great power. He comes like a shepherd to care for his flock. He comes to heal, to restore, to forgive, to bring you home. He comes to you. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and all whom you love, this day and forevermore.